Now we will see how to set up a case in Fluent. As we know how to import this geometry and mesh in Fluent and we already get familiar with the solver type and velocity formulations and the steady state or transient problem. Now we can proceed in our next setup. The next setup is the whole case setup. So if you go here, the model, you can see these options. Perhaps this model tab is the most important tabs in Fluent. Here you can proceed with your problem, whether you want a multi-phase flow problem, whether you want to solve some thermal problem, if you want to solve fluid flow for viscous fluid flow, if you want to develop, if you want to model radiation problem, or if you want to solve heat exchanger problem, you can do that. You can do combustion here. You can do discrete phase modeling, solidification, and acoustics. So these are the main physical phenomena you can model in ANSYS Fluent. Right now we are interested on viscous flow, that is flow over a cylinder. So we will go here and if you double click here, you have the options here, what type of fluid flow you want. If you want in visit fluid flow, then your viscosity will not have any effect on your flow. If you want to model laminar flow, you can do that. If you want to develop turbulent flow problem, then these are the options you can select. These are the turbulent model, the well-known turbulent model. Let's say if you want to develop a turbulent model, let's say K-Epsilon. If you select K-Epsilon, it will ask you what type of K-Epsilon model you want to use. Is it standard or RNG or realizable? And the neural treatments, how this neural treatment will be in your case and your, your problem. These are the model constant. So all of these are turbulence parameters. If you study turbulent modeling, then you will get familiar with these constants and the standard RNG and realizable problems and its, its modeling parameters. So if you really want to learn those things, you have to study. You can find a lot of documents regarding this turbulence model and ANSYS documentation or well-known advanced fluid mechanics books. But my suggestion is if you don't know the value of these constants, then keep this value as it is. This is the default value. If you exactly know this constant, then you can change whatever you want based on your model. But if you don't know, then do not change this default value. Otherwise, you will mess up with your solution. So if you select K omega, that's also another turbulent model, very well-known turbulent model. It has a standard and shear stress transport phenomena that is SST model. And you have also these different constants. You have transition K, K L omega. You have transition SST model. You have Reynolds stress model and you have scale adaptive simulation. In 2D, Fluent does not provide LES or large eddy simulation modeling, but in 3D, you will have another option here just below this scale adaptive simulation. There will be an option for large eddy simulation or the well known LES modeling. So you can select any of this. Let's say we want right now laminar. So select laminar, then OK. If you don't want any thermal transport in your problem then you don't use your thermal 
energy equation if you have a temperature change or energy change thermal energy change in your model then you can turn on the energy equation otherwise turn off the energy equation now in material fluid part you have air right now you can change this air to water or whatever if you want to change you will go to create option here you have the fluent database so if you go to fluent database and material type fluid you have all of these fluid and ANSYS provides the properties for that you can see here you can also change the properties if you want you can also create your own material if you need so right now we are using air so this is the air and these are the parameters for air lots of thermal and viscous parameters you can see here you can change the parameters if you want in solid if you select solid and ANSYS fluent provides these solids also it has also different properties you can change these properties if you want so right now we are dealing with only air so these are the main properties right now density and viscosity of air remember when you try to calculate your Reynolds number based on on your velocity use the value of your viscosity here some people use different value of viscosity and then they messed up with the boundary condition so always remember these things when you are trying to find out the velocity based on Reynolds number always use this viscosity value and close it then cell zone condition this is also important cell zone means this zone is our cell zone and if you go to edit you will see the material type is air right now and you have these options frame motions mesh motions porous zone these are the options when you have different moving objects or moving parts in your domain then you can choose this frame motion or mesh motion or porous zone we will try to see one problem based on that it has also source term and fixed value that in special case we use this source and fixed values otherwise we will stick with the default setting and here in the operating condition you have the operating pressure if your experiment is done on atmospheric pressure then our operating pressure is this and if you want to add gravity you can also add gravity if you want and okay then the boundary conditions the important thing is here you have inlet and outlet and symmetric wall and cylinder wall these are the defined wall that we have defined during meshing so this is inlet this is outlet this is symmetry and this is cylinder wall so you have these four boundaries here in the boundary condition you also have these boundaries and the interior surface body is just your domain so if you select inlet here a type option you can see right now it's velocity inlet by default you can change it to pressure inlet you can change it to mass flow inlet if you want based on your problem so let's stick with velocity inlet so if you select velocity inlet it will ask you the velocity let's say fluid is flowing or air is flowing at 5 meter per second so select 5 and here you have the unit you don't have any thermal equation right now so your thermal option is right now off you don't have any radiation modeling no combustion modeling no multiphase modeling so all of these tabs are inactive right now only we are dealing with viscous model so 
you need to provide just the velocity just for case if you go to the modeling and turn on the energy equation and if you go to boundary condition and turn on and go to the inlet in the thermal zone now you have the option for your temperature of your inlet air condition so you can see these things are very related to each other so you have to understand all of these things what you are trying to do and why you are trying to do so in boundary condition you have inlet velocity inlet you provide the velocities if you know the gauge pressure you can also provide the gauge gauge pressure in the velocity this is constant you can also change it to different velocity parameter uh, let's say you have a fluctuating velocity you can also put it as a new input parameter so you can play with these stuffs in the outlet right now the type is pressure outlet you can change it to outflow or outlet vent or mass flow exhaust fan anything or you can keep it as wall so flow will restrict here so in general we use outflow because this outflow will allow all the fluid comes from the inlet will go through the outlet whatever the pressure is at the outlet it doesn't matter the outlet condition will not affect your inlet solution and here it will ask you the flow rate weightings one means 100% of your fluid that comes from the inlet will go through the outlet no matter what if you put it 0.5 then 50% of your fluid will go through outlet and 50% of your fluid will accumulate within your domain that will violate your mass continuity equation so if you have one outlet just keep it as one so these are the boundary conditions if you go to cylinder wall this is wall so you don't have any conditions right now in the wall unless it's a stationary wall and the shear condition is no slip condition if you have a specific shear condition you can also specify this otherwise it's a no slip boundary condition you don't have any energy equation right now that's why the thermal option is turned off the same case happens for the radiation combustion and multi-phase so these for the momentum no slip wall boundary conditions same thing happens for the symmetry this is symmetry so no viscosity is affecting the flow and the wall dynamic mesh you don't have any moving mesh right now so don't worry about this dynamic mesh and reference values these are the reference value as you can see if you select compute from inlet it will show you the reference values that it will take during simulation so the density is the air density you should look this you should check this and the temperature here is 288.16 which is standard temperature and pressure uh, although the temperature standard temperature and pressure is 298 kelvin but fluent use 288 so you can change it if you want the velocity is 5 that we put the viscosity is also here so you can check this and in the next tutorial we will see the solution methods and how to solve a simple viscous model in fluent thank you